Hello, my name is Tony Chan from Telecom TV. I'm at the OpenStack Summit in uh, Sydney, Australia. Uh, with me today is Mike Purcell from uh, Red Hat. He is the Chief Security Architect. That's right. Mike. Th thanks for joining us. Um, so what's so special about Telco Security? It's, it's different. I think that one of the first things that, uh, that comes to mind is a regulator. Um, m almost all telcos are taking, you know, are, are operating in a, in a heavily regulated uh, market, uh, government regulation generally, and that's got to be the first, first place they, they think about security. So um, whether that is to do with your uptime or uh, how you have to re respond if you have a compromise or whatever, the regulator is going to be one of the first things you think about for, uh, for telcos. It's not the only thing, though. I think that the, you know, the uptime generally, even whether or not you're, uh, you, uh, you're looking at the regulator, is important. I think that's something which is happening across the enterprise as well, but we know that the telcos have, have been there first and they've had to be there first. But also there's kind of different layers, um, in some ways more for a telco than you might think uh, otherwise in a normal deployment or in a cloud deployment. And they have to be aware of all the different layers. Um, you've got your, you know, if you're talking about core traffic going across and then you've got maybe your VNF layer and your, uh, your, your infrastructure layer below that and a hardware layer below that as well. And if you're thinking about security, you need to be aware of all those layers at the same time. If you've got an attack coming in, um, which it might bridge those different layers. So it's not good enough just to monitor one layer or just two of layers. You've got to think about how those fit together, how you're monitoring, how you're reporting, how you're auditing, and if your forensics uh, fit across all of those. And that can be challenging. So I think there's a, a number of different things going on there, and you're going to have compromises. You're going to be attacked in different, different layers. You need to be aware of uh, patching at different layers, all of those things. Now, Enterprises do that too, but it's a different environment for telcos. Uh, and it's challenging, but fast moving, exciting, and security is sexy, right? So that's fun. <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> since we're at uh, OpenStack uh, Summit, it seems like every competition right now uh, includes some mention of containers. And so how does that, uh, how does container, the introduction of containers uh, into this uh, NFB environment impact security? Sure, well I think, a lot of people, when they think containers, think of them as an alternative to VMs, to virtual machines. Um, you know, the, the telco world has spent a lot of time looking at NFV in a very much sort of hypervisor VM type of, of way. Um, and, and certainly that matters. Looking at containers as, a, as an al alternative way of running and executing your code and, and your workloads is certainly important. But I think if you think that's the only thing, you're missing a big trick. Because the thing about the container world, uh, the way that that's moving, is that many of the people who, who started that don't think of it as an execution environment, they think of it as a packaging environment. Um, and the way, uh, way you package things changes the way you think about the life cycle of a container, and therefore of a workload. So you may be moving to microservices, you may be moving to a much more agile way. You know, VMs, you might think, live for days, weeks, years. A, a, a container could live for microseconds. And lots of people who are deploying containers are saying, well, we're any single container instance should never live for more than 24 hours. That's a very different security landscape to what you're using if you're using a VM, for instance. You know, for instance, that something is compromised, 24 hours it's gone away, for instance. But also, your entire DevOps world, you've got to think about security in a different way. You need to bake in security into your DevSecOps, that's sort of the new buzzword that we're having around, around DevOps. Bake that in so that you understand how that works. And that's going to be different to how you manage uh, your VMs, how you, uh, how you deploy. It's not just uh, about your developments, deploy and all your whole life cycle. So I think that um, it's, it, if you just think about how you protect your VMs from each other or from uh, outside influences uh, and compare that to containers, it's a starting point. But you need to change your mindset uh, if you're thinking about moving to containers to a DevOps way, a much faster um, way of moving. You're thinking, you know, minutes, not not days, uh, and that's a, that's going to be a big change. Um, it fits for some deployments and not others, and I think that's another thing that, as you say, everyone's talking about containers. Um, and in the same way that when VMs came along and said it will 
completely displace um, just bare, you know, bare metal, and it hasn't done that. In the same way, containers aren't going to displace VMs. They're going to live together. There'll be a continuum. Some use cases are, are very appropriate for VMs, some for containers, and sometimes you'll have you know, containers within VMs as well. That's a very good isolation mechanism. So there's a variety of different ways, but I think the, the key one I said before is it's a new mindset. You've got to change the way you think about uh, deploying and the life cycle beyond just the processing. So, uh, you know, can, can the industry expect some new technology to help them kind of navigate this, this new uh, model? I think so. I mean, there, there are some, some general uh, different approaches around things like uh, trust models and, and how you have trusted servers. But I think what, one of the really interesting things that's coming out is from the hardware point of view. You've got um, a number of uh, silicon manufacturers coming up with uh, trusted execution environments. Um, and these are, these are technologies which allow you to run code in such a way that um, even if you're the hypervisor owner or uh, you're the admin or the root admin or you have kernel access, even that, you can't see inside the workloads on a host. So that means that you know, you can, even if you don't entirely trust um, the person who's running your, uh, your, your host, um, or they only have certain levels of access um, within your organization, you can still think about citing and running your sensitive applications, whether that's a firewall, whether it's customer data, uh, whether it's um, I know, uh, a, a third party uh, edge type solution, in ways that uh, you don't need to worry about that trust. They are isolated not only uh, from, of course, other workloads, but even from the host. And I really think that's going to change how people um, architect solutions. Um, how do you, what bits do you decide to put in one of these? Um, how do you architect your solutions? Where do you put, where do you place these things? Um, it allows you maybe even to put some of your stuff on the public cloud, which is, you know, something which is generally a no-no. Uh, for many of your, your really sensitive applications. So that's one of the things that's come, there's, there's a bunch of other things, but I think that we'll see that in the next two to three years really begin to take off and change how people think. And I think it's very important and very interesting for the, for the telco uh, world, both in core, but also edge and hosted and data center as well. Right, great, Mike, thank you very much. You're very welcome, thanks for your time, appreciate it.